In this lesson, we are going to talk about relations and ordered pairs. And the goal is that at the end of this lesson, you will be able to say, I can graph relationships using a set of ordered pairs on the Cartesian plane. So the title we have here is Patterns and Ordered Pairs. And before we start doing anything, we got to get some of the terminology out of the way. We're going to start with what is a Cartesian plane. So here's our Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane is a grid cut into four sections by a pair of axes. So we have this picture right here of our grid cut into the four sections uh, by a pair of axes. And those four sections have names. They are called, this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. There's quadrant three. And lastly, we have quadrant four. Now, what about those axes? The vertical axes, the one that goes up and down, the vertical axis is the y-axis, also known as the dependent axis. The values on the dependent axis depend on those on the horizontal axis. And the horizontal axis is the x-axis, or the independent axis. It's an ordered pair. To state a point on the grid, you give its coordinates x first and then y. The resulting pair of coordinates is called an ordered pair, and it's called that because they always go in that same order, x first, then y, and we write it as x comma y, although we'll have numbers in there for the x and the y. And lastly, a very special ordered pair is the origin. The center of the grid where the axes cross is called the origin. The coordinates of the origin are 0, 0. So right here is the origin. We usually put a big O there. And the coordinates of the origin are 0, 0. Now, speaking of coordinates, we're going to talk about the coordinates in the quadrants. And I want you to notice that in quadrant 1, everything all of the numbers to the right on the x-axis right here are positive. So all of our x-coordinates in quadrant 1 are going to be positive. Uh, the y-coordinates above, if you take a look uh, at all of these y's here, they're all positive as well. So in this quadrant, all of our coordinates are positive. X's are positive and Y's are positive. Now in quadrant two, we're backwards this way. So our X's are negative, but we are above the axes and our Y's are still positive. So in this quadrant, the coordinates, the X coordinates are gonna be negative and the Y coordinates are going to be positive. Down here in quadrant three, the x-coordinates were still to the left of the vertical axis. They're still negative. And the y-coordinates, since we are now below the horizontal axis, they are also negative, as seen on the scale. And lastly, in quad 4, quad 4 is this quadrant here. And if you look at the numbers that are surrounding quad 4, the x's, the horizontal are positive, but the y's are negative. So in quad four, we will have positive x's, but negative y's. Now example number one asks us to label the points on the above grid. So we're gonna take a look at that, starting at the ones in quadrant one. Uh, this point right here in quadrant one is two units to the right. So our x coordinate is two. And it is five units above, so our y coordinate is positive five. Taking a look at the next one point we have in quadrant one, it is 10 units to the right, so we say 10. And it is eight units above, so we say 10 comma eight. Looking back in quadrant two, we are now to the left of the vertical line. So everything, all of our x coordinates are going to be negative, but we're still above the horizontal. So our y coordinates are going to be positive. So this point right here, we're going to look at it first. Um, it is 10 units back and four units above. So we label that as negative 10 for the back and positive four for it being above. And this last point here in quadrant two is six units back 
so we go negative six to represent the back, and it is seven units above, so we say comma positive seven to represent seven units above. That's positive. Now, down in quadrant three, this point is four units back and four units, five units, sorry, below. So we go negative four comma negative five. And lastly, in quadrant four, uh, this point is nine units to the right and six units down or below. So we have nine comma negative six. Now, carrying on, example number two gives us a little bit of information before it asks us to do anything. Example two says, if plotted points form a straight line you can, that you can put a ruler on, uh, and draw a line through and hit every single one of them, we say that that is a linear relationship. Now these points here, it asks, do they form a linear relationship? Well, let's plot these points. The point one, four, I'm gonna go one unit uh, in front of and four units above the origin point. Uh, two, three is gonna be here, two units in over and three units up. And 3, 2 is going to be this one here. Now that sure looks like a straight line, and I just happen to have a straight line here that I'll put through them. So there is our straight line. So yes, that is a linear relationship. Do they form a linear relationship? That is a resounding yes. Now, example 3 also tells us a little bit of information. It says a set of points can also be represented in a table of values. Make a table out of the above points. So I'm going to show you how. Uh, all of the x's are going to go in the first column, and all of the y's are going to go in the second column. So taking a look at what we've got here, we're going to start by putting all the x's. There I've got an x value of 1, an x value of 2 and an x value of 3. And beside them in the y column, we're going to put their corresponding y value. So when x is 1, y is 4. So I'm going to put 4 beside it. When x is 2, y is 3. So I need a 3 beside this 2. And when x is 3, y is 2. So I need a 2 beside that 3. And now we have that represented. We have those points represented in a table of values. Uh, these again are the points 1, 4, 2, 3, and 3, 2, just written in a table. Our next example asks us to make a table of values. It doesn't ask us to graph them, but it asks us to make a table of values for this particular relationship. It says driving lessons cost $40 an hour. Make a table of values for up to six hours of instruction. Is this direct or partial variation? How many hours could you get for $150? Now we're going to deal with that direct or partial variation in just a minute. Um, but let's make a table first. Now we know that our y depends on our x. So what goes in the y column has to depend on the x values. So the two things that we have here is cost and number of hours. So we have to think to ourselves: does hours depend on cost or does cost depend on how many hours we take? And if you think about it, that's the one that makes more sense. The amount we pay depends on how long we have the instruction for. So we're going to put cost in the Y column. And the number of hours goes in the X column. Now it asks us to graph it for up to six hours. So we're going to go for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 hours. And now we have to figure it out. So for the cost of zero, in this case, is zero. We don't have to pay anything. Um, for one hour, the cost is $40. So for one hour, I'm going to pay $40. For two hours, that's going to be 80 For three hours, I've got three hours at $40. So that's three times 40 is 120 For four hours, four hours times 40 is 660 5 hours times 40 is $200, and lastly, 6 times 40 is $240. So there is, <laughs> just close that little window. Uh, so there is our table of values. 
and it says, uh, is this direct or partial variation? Well, here's this little pull tab here. Let's see if it has any insight on direct or partial variation. Uh, it says direct variation, one value is a simple multiple of another. When the independent variable is zero, the dependent variable is zero as well. And from our table of values, we can actually see that very plainly. We've got this zero, zero here. So that tells us that since both of them are zero at the same time, this must be direct variation. Uh, we also have this one is a simple multiple of the other. To get from this column to this column, uh, and that's the way I was doing it, I was taking the number of hours and multiplying by 40. So one column is a simple multiple of the other column. Now, about how many hours could you get for $150? Uh, well, let's take a look at our table of values. Um, $150 lies somewhere between $120 and $160, and it's closer to $160. So you could get almost four hours. So almost you could get almost four hours for $150. Now, carrying on for our last example of the day, it's another one very similar and it asks us kind of the same thing. Uh, a driver's ed co class costs $100 for the class and $40 for each hour of driving instruction. Make a table of values for up to six hours of instruction. Is this direct or partial variation? So once again, we've got the cost being dependent on the number of hours that you drive. And we're going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hours. Now this one's a little bit different because if we take the driver's ed class, but then we never actually go out driving, it's still going to cost us that $100, even though we haven't taken any hours of instruction. Um, after that, one hour of instruction is going to cost us $40, so that's $140. And then two hours of instruction is going to cost us $80 on top of that $100, so it's $180. Three hours of instruction costs us $120, which we have to add to this $100, so that's uh, $220. Then we got 260, and if you notice, we're just going up by 40s, so that's going to be 300, and then 340 dollars. Now, is this direct or partial variation? Let's take a look at what our pull tab says. It tells us that partial variation, one value is not a simple multiple of another. There is a fixed value that is the same no matter what the value of the dependent variable is. When the dependent variable is zero, the independent variable will be the fixed value. And we can see that from our table of values. Here's our fixed value is 100. That's the cost of the driver's ed class. It changes no matter how many uh, hours we drive. It doesn't change no matter how many hours we drive. So that is our fixed value. And then I have to add on the um, multiple of 40 afterwards. So it's not exactly the same. So this is, in fact, partial variation. And that is the lesson for today.